Hello everyone, this is Brian here again, going over the large catechism. And I don't have a copy of our church mug, but this is with St. John the Apostle Lutheran Church. We have our Wednesday night catechism study. And this is just a review of what we did yesterday, because this is Thursday afternoon, going over the Wednesday night, Wednesday night large catechism study. It's, it, it, it's much more exciting than I, my dull voice is making it sound. <laughs> this, this by far, this last study by far was probably the best we've had in a long time. And the reason why is because we not only learned what baptism was, what baptism is and was, not was, but is, we learned that last week. But what I would say is the biggest thing that we learned this yesterday is what does baptism profit me, me and you? Why do we need baptism? What is, what is the profit of our baptism? The, keep in mind, it, don't make sure you get that today. If you get anything from this video, what does baptism profit me? And why do we need it just opposed to, uh, just opposed to not having it? Why is it so important? The why and the what. So just remember the why and the what as you, as you listen to me read this. And please read along. Read along. And if, you have, if I get anything wrong or you have any comments or questions or suggestions, please let me know. Please let us know. And if you'd like to join us tomorrow, next Wednesday night, we are, we're, we're hosting at a specific location. There was four of us there last night. And we'll also have it on Zoom. For those that are not able to make it, we'll have the meeting on Zoom. It's an hour, 7.30 to 8.30. We'll have you done in an hour. But we'll also have really good food, and it's a good time for anyone that wants to come. We start. We start here. On, I'm going to share my screen. This Zoom is the unbelievable, allowing us to share the screen like it does and record like it does. It's the best thing ever. Okay. The Large Catechism. Last week... If you haven't, if, if this is your first video watching, the large catechism is the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments, one through ten, kind of a summary of the commandments, the Lord's Prayer, the I think the seven petitions of the Lord's Prayer, and the Apostles' Creed. We've finished all three of those sections. We've been going since June, so this is not not something we've done really quickly. It's going since June. But it's not something that takes a year to do either. We've just gone really slow, and we've had a, really, a lot of fun doing it. That's why it's taken so long. But last week, we did, the next part of the large catechism is holy baptism. And last week, we, did, we, we were just on a tear. We did 18 paragraphs last week. Last night, we got really into it, and we only got, we got 11. We got through 11 paragraphs last night. We started on paragraph 19. <clears throat> so paragraph 19. And just remember, as we go through this, the what and the why. What and the why of baptism are important. Paragraph 19. Therefore, we always teach that the sacraments and all external things which God ordains and institutes should not be regarded according to the coarse external mask as we regard the shell of a nut, but as the word of God included therein. So this, so that kind of, he's moving on to another point. So I'll summarize this. The word of God is included in, in this baptism. It's not just, hey, something you got to go do. Hey, you need to, you need to do this for mom. You need this for grandma. It's, it's not, it's the word of God is included in this, in this baptism. Okay. For thus, we also speak of the paternal estate of civil government. And here he's going to compare it to the fourth commandment. If we regard them as far as they have noses, eyes, skin, and hair, flesh, and bones, they look like Turk and heathen. He's talking about our rulers that are over us. And some might start up and say, why should I esteem them more than others? They just look like an ordinary man. Why, why, why should I esteem President Donald Trump or President Barack Obama or Governor Brian Kemp? or Nathan Deal, 
or whoever the governor is when you're watching this. But because the commandment is added, honor thy father and thy mother, I behold a different man, adorned and clothed with the majesty and glory of God. The commandment, I say, is the chain of gold about his neck, yea, the crown upon his head, which shows me how and why one must honor this flesh and blood. So you've heard people say, I honor, I'm not honoring him, I'm honoring the office. And this goes along with those lines. I'm honoring the office of president, governor, policeman, uh, fire, fire commissioner, fire chief, fire marshal. They have the badge. You're honoring the badge. And it's from the commandment that God says, honor your father and your mother and the authorities that th those father and mothers are placed. For more on that, check out this large catechism. Go back to the fourth commandment. Luther really, really digs in on that commandment, on this. But you kind of like to get this, you got to read that part of the commandments here. Okay, moving on. Thus, and much more even, you must honor baptism and esteem it glorious on account of the word, since he himself has honored it both by words and deeds. Moreover, confirmed it with miracles from heaven. For do you think it was a jest that when Christ was baptized, the heavens were open and the Holy Ghost descended, descended visibly and everything was divine, glory, and majesty? So he's saying, well, here's the why. The why is... Baptism, baptism should be honored because Christ honored it. Christ got baptized. Christ told us to baptize. Go ye therefore and baptize, baptize. Um, here, let's go back to the beginning of this section. Right here. Go ye therefore and teach all na nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Honor it. We honor baptism because Christ honored baptism. And even thus, even more so, there was miracles associated with baptism. When, when Christ was baptized, the, the Holy Ghost descended visibly, and the heavens were opened, and divine glory and majesty was added to it. There you go. There's your why. Why we honor baptism. Okay. Martin Luther continues. Therefore, I exhort again that these two, the water and the word, by no means separated from one another and parted. For if the word is separated from it, the water is the same as that which a servant cooks and may indeed be called a bathkeeper's baptism. But when it is added, as God has ordained it, it is a sacrament and is called Christ's baptism. Let this be the first part regarding the essence and dignity of the Holy Sacrament. So probably in an ideal world, we should have ended last week here. We should have ended last week here because it's kind of a clear breaking point of the why, <clears throat> of the why, um, or of the what, what baptism is. But hey, it's good to, it's good to review. But here's what, here's what we really dug into last night, which is the, the, the why, why be baptized, okay? What do we get out of it? What does a baptism profit us? In the second place, since we know now what baptism is and how it is to be regarded, we must also learn why and for what purpose it is instituted. That is, what it profits, gives, and works. And this also we cannot discern better than from the words of Christ above quoted. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And if you're not familiar with that, <clears throat> Mark chapter 16, 5. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but the he that believeth not shall be damned. So remember that. Remember those words right there. All right. I'm losing my place. Therefore, state it more simply that the power, work, profit, fruit, and end of baptism is this, namely to save you and me. I'm adding the you and me, but it's namely to save. For no one is baptized in order that he may become a prince, but as the words declare that he be saved. 
But to be saved, we know, is nothing else than to be delivered from sin, death, and the devil, and to enter in the kingdom of Christ and to live with him forever. The answer to all of our problems, the answer to age, to, to growing old, to the, the fear of death, to the fear of shame and sin, and, and the fear of the evil one, of all evil that attacks us, and to enter into the kingdom of Christ and to live with him forever. And if you've seen the uh, Muppets 3D vision, uh, for, uh, where he goes, forever? And to live with him forever. We live with Christ forever. That, that is the why. Why be baptized is to be saved. We know is nothing else than to be delivered from sin, death, the devil, and enter in the kingdom of Christ and live with him forever. Here, you see again how highly and precious we should esteem baptism. Because in it, we obtain such an unspeakable treasure, which also indicates sufficiently that it cannot be ordinary mere water. For mere water could not do such a thing, but the word does it, as said above. The fact that the name of God is comprehended therein, but where the name of God is, there must also be life and salvation, that it may be indeed called a divine, blessed, fruitful, and gracious water. For by the word, such power is imparted to baptism, that it is a layer of laver, laver of regeneration, as St. Paul also calls it in Titus 3.5. And so you say, well, what does Titus 3.5 say? Oh, well, I'm glad you asked, because I have that here. Titus 3.5 says, I have to share this for you. I want you to see it. Titus 3.5 says, right here, Titus 3.5, not by the works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Here we go, back to the large catechism. So in, there's so many gifts given by well, the, the why be baptized, the, the, the assurance of the forgiveness of sins, the to be saved, to be delivered from sin and death and the devil, and to enter in the kingdom of Christ and live with him forever. Okay, so we get into the, the, the thing that is, that is that's like the, the skeptics on baptism. But as our would-be wise new spirits assert that faith alone saves <clears throat> and that works as external things avail nothing, we answer, it is true indeed that nothing in us Nothing, us, it, nothing in us is of any avail but faith, as we shall hear further. But these blind guides are unwilling to see this, namely that faith must have something which it believes, that is, which it takes hold, and upon which it stands and rests. Thus faith clings to the water and believes that it is baptism, in which there is pure salvation and life, not through the water, as we have sufficiently stated, but through the fact that it is embodied in the word and institution of God and that, and the name of God inheres in it. Now, if I believe this, what else is it than believing in God as in him who has given and planted his word into the ordinance and proposes us this external thing, wherein we may apprehend such a treasure that this external thing, baptism, this water, and the word of God added to it is where we wrap our faith into, that our, our faith is into this water <clears throat> that God has given us to, bat, to assure us of the forgiveness of sins. Now, that, now they are so mad as to separate faith and to that which faith clings and is bound, though it be something external. Yea, it shall and must be something external that it may be apprehended by the senses and understood and thereby be brought to the heart, as indeed the entire gospel is an external verbal preaching. In short, what God does and works in us, he proposes to work through such external ordinances. Wherever, therefore, he speaks, yea, in whichever direction or by whatever means he speaks, 
thither, Luther, we learn Luther likes to use the word thither, thither faith must look and to that it must hold. Now here we have the words, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. To what else do they refer than to baptism? That is, to the water comprehended in God's ordinance. Hence it follows that whoever rejects baptism rejects the word of God, faith, and Christ, who directs us thither and binds us to baptism. <clears throat> All right. Thus ends where we got to last night. If you'd like to chime in on the debate Chime in on the confessions here in the large catechism and the explanation of baptism, the why and the what, the what baptism is and the why be baptized. I think simply put, if I were to simply put it, it is the assurance, something we can cling to, we can touch, we can touch with our hands, it's external, that God put into this water, that it gives us that assurance. He delivers, he delivers his forgiveness of sins to us through baptism. We won it on the cross. He delivers it to us. That we have that assurance that, as Pastor Josh said last night, it's step one. Or it's the basic step one. It's, I, know that I'm, I, I know that I have the forgiveness of sins, whereas it says, I have salvation. I'm getting stuck. Delivered from, I'm delivered from sin, death, and the devil. I can enter the kingdom of Christ and live with him forever. That through baptism I have this. And there, there you have it. There you have where we left off last night. You are fully caught up. If you've stuck around to watch this video, you're fully caught up on baptism here in the large catechism study. And thank you for watching. I know this has been long. I really... Uh, I, let me know if, if I got anything wrong, if there's any, I'm just going over here what Luther said in this large catechism. So let me know if I got anything wrong or if you have any questions about this, um, we, can, we can ask Pastor Drouse to assist us. We can drill into this some more, but uh, I do appreciate your time and, and God bless you guys. If you have any prayer requests, please let me know and we will have worship service Friday or not Friday, we'll have worship service on Sunday at 1030 on Zoom, as we've done in the past. And as well, if you're interested in joining us, please shoot me an email. I'll get you the directions for where we're having the service, as well as our safety protocol that we're taking during this time. We got a lot of uh, PPE today at, uh, at the store, and then I'm waiting on some safety masks protect those who come as well that should come i was hoping today but um if not well just shoot me an email and we'll, we'll go over all that information but we'll also record service and we will put it on zoom thank you and god bless